Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Jamie. And I was going to sharpen Jamie's knife today. She asked me to sharpen it, and then she asked me to do it on camera. <laughs> hey, it's a really important thing to learn how to sharpen a knife. It is. If you're going to have your tools, your knife is a tool. You should know how to maintain it. Yes. That goes for chisels, saw, hand saws, if you learn to sharpen a chainsaw, anything like that. You should learn to sharpen your own tools. Be self-sufficient. That's right. And it saves money. And a sharp tool is much safer than a dull tool. You don't have to force it through the object you're cutting as much. When you force a dull tool through an object, you're more likely to slip out or come across your hand, for example, dig into your leg on the follow through. There's lots of many reasons to have a sharp knife. Yes, please no emergency room visits. <laughs> So, through the years I've learned to use a lot of different sharpening methods. I've learned the scary sharp method, I've learned natural stone method, I've used diamond plates. Um, you can actually use the edge of your car window, believe it or not. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sharper you keep your knife, the higher grit abrasive you have to use which takes off less metal. It just maintains your edge instead of reforming your edge. If you're cutting things you're not supposed to, you can nick your blade, you can break your blade in half, break it right off. Um, you can chip your blade. Um, if you're that aggressive with your knife, you're gonna go through the steel very quickly because you're gonna have to grind that out to get a proper edge again. And it's just not worth it. There's better tools for that. Okay, so what kind of supplies are we going to need to do this knife sharpening project today? Well, one method you use, you can use natural stones, um, which you can get at any big box store. And I think they're 15 to $20, give or take, depending on where you live. Well, where did you get yours, Matthew? I've gotten mine, some of them from big box stores. I've gotten some out of antique tool collections. What? You collect antique tools? Yeah, but you end up with <laughs> stones like this. So, this stone used to be flat on each side. It looks like a bow tie. Unfortunately, somebody did not maintain their tool. Um, they didn't worry about it so much way back when. Um, but it also makes it easier to sharpen your tools if you have a nice flat surface like a diamond plate. There you go. Or an actually maintained stone. The nice thing about having diamond plates and stones is to keep your stones flat, you can use your diamond plates just by rubbing them over the surface until they're flat. To do that, you take a pencil and mark all the way across your stone. Get nice big scribbles all over it. Take your diamond plate, your coarse diamond plate, and rub it on your stone um, until your all your pencil marks disappear. And at that point, you know your stone's flat. So basically, it's a guideline. It's like a cheat method so you know when you've done enough. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and you can get diamond plates as small as this. And this is actually one for sharpening fishing hooks and your fishing knives. Nice. So, if you're like us and you like to take a adult date day and just kind of bum around, we went to the beach one time and we were looking at a bunch of different stones here on the Great Lakes in Michigan. We could have picked up some old fishing hooks and sharpened them. Well, I wouldn't recommend that. You can find stones on the beach to use to sharpen. No, I was saying fishing lures to resharpen, not use the stones no, to No, we'll just replace them. those hooks. Okay, I like to repurpose stuff, but whatever. So what else do you need, Matthew? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I suggest getting a strop. Piece of leather, simple piece of leather and jeweler's rouge 
Now, this is just a piece of leather that I got from a hobby shop. Um, and you can actually go to big box stores and get Jewelers Rouge at some of them. Um, or you could buy a strop to use, and this is the first one I bought. Uh, I just bought it from big box store, and it came with Jewelers Rouge. And that one is a strop that is a piece of leather, and it's a glue to a wood block. Um, I kind of collectively use parts of each method. I found different methods that, different parts of different methods that work for me, mm -hmm. and I seem to get a better edge that way. Everybody finds their preferred method. As long as it works and you get a good, sharp, clean edge, there's nothing wrong with it. Awesome. Um, a lot of people worry a lot about the exact angle to sharpen their knife at. It matters to a point, but it's not a life or death thing. So a lot of people worry about it, and if you're that worried about it, um, most knives are sharpened at approximately a 22 and a half degree angle, so half of a 45. The easiest way to get that angle is to take a simple piece of paper, fold it diagonal to get your 45. Like you're folding to make a paper airplane. Yep. And then take your 45 and fold it over again to get your 22 and a half degree angle. That's neat. If you're going to do that, set it on your stone of your choo of your choosing and you just line your knife up with that. And then you stroke the stone from there. Now, like I said, it's not that important. It's just a matter of having a consistent angle on each side. So it's a reference guide for someone who's brand new and has it no is, idea. But so. it's also it's not that important. Yes, a reference guide helps if you're that worried about it, but it's not a big deal. Okay. So what so, other materials do you have? So we went over the strap, when, sharpening stone, what else? When you're using stones, you can use water okay. to lubricate it and float the particles out, the steel particles out, or you can use oil. Um, I'm sure you could use, like a lot of people use glass cleaner, like this is simple green. Um, I don't know if I would use that on a stone because you're gonna, you're basically putting soap in your stone. Okay. And it's going to absorb that. If you start out with your stone using oil, you cannot switch back to water. If you're using water on your stones, you can switch to oil, but you cannot go back to, to water. Okay. Because oil repels water and yes. you have the residue on there. Right on. Okay. Um, diamond plates. You can use glass cleaner. You can use oil. You can use water. You cannot put anything on it at all. You don't have to. I recommend using something because your stones won't clog up as quickly. You know, you won't have to worry about cleaning them as often. Um, after you've used any kind of liquid on them, I do recommend wiping it off so your stones don't rust. Um, Just like cast iron. <laughs> so, let me clear this off a little bit. <laughs> on my diamond stones, I prefer to use simple green. Spray a little on there. Get your approximate angle. You can feel the edge. If it's big enough, you feel it. Um, some people actually, to make sure they, they keep a consistent angle, will take marker along the edge, the face of the edge. And when you're stroking the stone with your knife, it will take the marker off. So you know you've kept a consistent angle. So kind of like the pencil trick that we did. On the stones, on the stone. yeah. Right on. Um, you want to make sure you keep how many strokes on each side consistent. So you really want to do three to four on one side and then 
flip it over, do three to four on the other side. That way your edge stays center on your blade. strokes you should start to develop what's called a burr. What the burr is is the metal thinning at the edge of the blade until it's thin enough that it'll actually start folding up. As you flip the blade over it'll flip the other way it'll go back and forth. That's how you know you're actually sharpening the edge of your knife. So one of the ways I was taught to sharpen the knife was long slicing strokes like I showed you from the start. Um, another way is to actually stroke with the, with the knife edge towards you to pull the metal off the face. Um, some, for some people it's just easier to get that burr that way. Um, some people, people feel you shouldn't do it that way. Some people say it's the best way to do it. Um, another way is to actually make circles on the blade and move the contact point of the blade. So now that I've developed a consistent burr all the way down the knife, um, which is probably going to be too hard to see on camera, um, so how you feel that is this right here is the sharp edge of the knife. I'm actually pushing towards it from the back of the knife and I can feel that catching my finger. Okay. Um, I always thought it kind of looks like the scratch off from lotto tickets that you scratch off. <laughs> sort <laughs> but of. But teeny it, tiny. It looks like an extremely small wire along the edge of your blade. Okay, cool. Um, which gets worked back and forth. Um, some people say you want to try and eliminate that on each stone you use. I don't do that. There's no point, in, to me, there's no point in breaking it off when you're gonna work your way down the stone and it's gonna get smaller and smaller anyways. From one stone to the other, it's gonna come off on the next stone in my experience. So now you're using so a different I've stone. I've gone to an extra fine stone from an extra course. Hey hon, you know why that stone's extra fine? Why babe? <laughs> Cause you're extra fine. <laughs> my understanding, diamond stones are not rated the same as say sandpaper or a natural stone um, they are extra coarse extra extra coarse uh, medium fine extra fine extra extra fine like you. Um, <laughs> the best comparable information i found is an extra coarse is somewhere around 120 grit to 220 grit from my understanding and the extra fine is right around 1200 grit um, now that I've developed the burr uh, from the extra coarse I'm going to come down to the extra fine and I'm going to do the same thing whether it's slicing in to the stone at a consistent angle or actually pulling the knife away as long as you're keeping consistent angle and you're still doing it at like a 20 degree it's approximately 22 and a half give okay. or take um, it's just a matter of keeping a consistent angle no matter which stone sandpaper whatever sharpening device so we're just gonna do that now until another bur until, burr forms until a smaller burr forms okay
So now that I've moved to an extra fine stone, um, I'm not really shaping the edge so much anymore as I'm actually taking the scratches from the more coarse stone out and I'm working down finer and finer to eliminate scratches from the last coarseness that I used. So it won't take as long to do so. You just kind of want to look at your edge and look at the scratch patterns. Make sure you're keeping a consistent angle. If you can see well enough, you'll see different facets which tell you if you're keeping a consistent angle or not. You want one facet. So now that it looks like I've gotten all the scratches out from the extra course to the extra fine course, I'm then going to move down, well up in grit basically, to a 2000 grit piece of wet and dry sandpaper. I am going to wet it and begin to work my knife from there. With sandpaper, you may want to watch, you want to hold it off the edge of something and you want whatever you're whatever you're laying it on or have it glued to like a piece of plywood uh, MDF um, a piece of float glass um, steel plate flat piece of granite um, you need whatever surface to be as flat as possible um, so your sandpaper was flat as you see I'm actually holding it against a piece of plywood I could probably use the back of my diamond plates which wouldn't be a bad idea you just need it fairly flat so you have a reference surface and all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag the knife backwards so I don't cut into the sandpaper and just work those scratches out so I'm actually at this high of grit I'm beginning the polishing stage which is going to give you a much stronger edge that lasts a lot longer. So now that I'm done using my stones, I want to make sure they're dry, as dry as possible, because you don't want them to rust. Just like cast iron. <laughs> and you will get a lot of metal out of them. Metal dust. So next we'll be moving on to the leather straps since we used the 6000 grit and removed the most if not all of the scratches from the extra fine stone. Um, we're going to use polishing compound Jewelers Rouge and you're going to rub it on that stone. You don't need to cake it on, you just need it to be on there. Um, perfect example is right here. Uh, I've got it on but you can still see the leather through it. It does not need to be caked on. So basically just enough to create a little bit of slide between the friction? Just enough to create friction actually. Oh, to create the friction, got it. Um, and same thing, you want, you don't want to cut into your strop so you don't want to cut towards the blade. You want to pull it away. So the edge is away from the direction I'm pulling it. Um, and just work it off the edge. You know, three times on each side before you flip it um, and you're just polishing the knife you know, two to three whatever you're doing do the same on each side uh, I don't suggest going more than about four on each side um, and I'm really not pushing that hard no matter what I no matter what kind of stone I'm pushing it on 
uh, and pushing it about the equivalent of, say, pushing an elevator button is the best way I've heard it described. But you're just polishing that edge and working off whatever burr is left on it at about the same angle you sharpened it at. When, you know, I switched over to just the flat piece of leather I bought, um, you know, as long as you have a, a hard, flat surface underneath it, um, I can just work it off the edge, just the same as I did the other one. Just polishing that edge. So again with this you really don't need that many strokes. Um, best guess is 20 to 30 on each side give or take. Um, it has quite the mirror polish on it already. I can see it shining. Really what you want. Mm. And now it's super sharp. It's very very sharp. <laughs> So, pretty simple. Yeah. Uh-oh. We can test it. Okay. There are different ways to test your knife. Oh, yeah. But wait, isn't paper going to dull it? No. Sharpen it again, mister. Uh-huh. <laughs> you want to try and make sure it doesn't, it's not tearing the paper, it's actually cutting it. Yeah. There's no drag. Nice! Thanks, babe! You're welcome, hon. So, pretty simple. So if you guys are gonna have pocket knives, make sure that you're sharpening them yourself, practice on your friends, kitchen knives, hone your skills. You can actually sharpen scissors in a similar way. Yes! Um, maybe one time I'll get into that. There you go. All right, guys, so that's it from us today. Thank you so much for being here. Remember to sow seeds of love in life and in the garden, too. And keep your tools sharp. Bye.